Hi, welcome to week seven of Generative AI for IT professionals. And in this week, we will look at prompt engineering further. So we will be looking at iterative prompting and then fine tuning the responses. Now, if you remember in the last uh, video where we talked about prompt engineering, we were talking about structuring prompts for complex tasks where we took an example, we broke down the entire prompt into smaller steps and step by step, we asked ChatGPT to build the solution. Now in today's or this week's video, we will be using a technique called iterative prompting. So we will first ask ChatGPT for a response and then we will iterate through the solution and we will fine tune the response so that we will be getting exactly what we want. So let's try to do this using a demo and let's get started. All right, so let's start with a quick recap of the last prompt engineering video that we had. So previously we discussed breaking down complex queries into manageable parts and using sequential prompts to guide ChatGPT through a multi-step process, right? So this approach basically gave us a lot of clarity and accuracy, but sometimes the initial response might not meet our expectation. So that's where iterative prompting comes into picture. So in iterative prompting, it's all about rephrasing, refining and following up on responses to get exactly what you need. So we will start with probably a generic prompt and then we will refine the prompt to get exactly what we want. So let's jump in and understand this with an example. Now I have ChatGPT here and refining responses involves follow up questions, right? So let's start with an example. So I'm going to give a very basic initial prompt. I'm going to say explain, oops, explain the steps for setting up a MySQL database. Now there's a very generic prompt and ChatGPT is gonna respond saying like, hey, you know what, these are the steps. So it basically says you have to install MySQL and it doesn't know where you're going to install. So it's gonna say on Windows, this is the command, on Linux, this is it, on Mac, this is it. And then it'll ask you, I mean, then it'll give you details like how to log in, create a database, users and grant permissions, you know, connect to the database and maybe create a simple table and insert some sample data. So this is a very generic response, right? Now I'm gonna refine this and look at what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna say, can you provide step-by-step -step, uh, instructions, including specific commands for Ubuntu? So now we are saying that we want specifically for Ubuntu, right? And now it says, okay, so you have to start by updating your system. So the sudo apt update, that was not there before, if you remember. And then the commands are tailor-made for Ubuntu, right? So now all these commands are specifically for Ubuntu and it has refined those commands. It has even addressed additional details like start and enable the service because it knows which platform you are talking to. So this is what we mean by refining and you can, this is a very simple example and you can take it further to uh, get what you want for any use case that you want. Now let's also pick up a real world example to see iterative prompting in action, right? So let's try to create a deployment checklist. So I'm gonna start by this prompt where I'm gonna say what should be included in a deployment checklist uh, for a web application. So I just want to know like, if I want to deploy a web application, what should be uh, included in that? So if I do this, then ChatGPT says, you know, you have these pre-deployment checks and then you have, you know, what is inside the code readiness and environment setup and uh, security checks and whatnot. And let's see what it says. Okay. So it's pretty decent. And then it actually has the deployment process. Okay. And you can see different type of deployment process like database deployment, application deployment. And you also have this post deployment verification, right? 
you have this user accept acceptance testing, security compliance, and then there is this post deployment maintenance as well. So this is pretty standard. And then it also is very intelligent but it, because it gives you some bonus automation tools, right? And now what we can do is we can narrow the scope right so we can uh, pick up one specific uh, uh, step from this and ask it to uh, uh, expand on that for example we have testing and QA so I can basically say that expand on testing and QA so I just want to need uh, I, I just need more information on this right what uh, specific tests should be performed for a web application now i'm being specific about one particular you know scope right so now it is very specific about testing and qa for web application deployment see now it starts talking about unit testing and then uh, the specific tools related to unit testing and then you have integration testing right you may have load testing and so on and so forth right so you have end-to-end -end testing right now so now you have narrowed down this scope and you can even narrow down it further for example uh, it, it's coming up with all these um, different options regression testing you know then functional testing and so on and so forth and you can pick up one specific for example I can ask more about you know regression testing right so I can say can you elaborate elaborate on regression testing and what tool in general should I focus on here so I, I'm basically asking it like okay pick up one and then uh, go further so it's actually not done with the you know uh, previous uh, uh, output you know it's actually created a table is interesting right and uh, it is comparing you know the test type and purpose and tools and all and now I say okay elaborate on regression testing and now it says okay what is this what do you mean by regression testing right and where it is uh, applicable right and regression testing can be categorized so there are different categories right and then it is very specific for example you want to do unit testing uh, unit level regression testing these are the tools you know for example I might go for JUnit you want to do partial regression testing I may go for postman for API testing right and full regression testing there are tools and there is like smoke versus sanitary regression testing selenium and also you see so this is how you can actually iterate through the results all right so what are some of the challenges and tips uh, on a last note right see iteration is very, very a very powerful technique but uh, you know it can go haywire right so one of the challenges and you know, one of the tips related to that is be specific in follow-ups, right? So you have to clearly highlight what you want ChatGPT to refine or elaborate on. So this can be a, a step uh, in the answer that it has provided. It can be a subcategory of one of the major category that it has explained, something like that. So that is the first thing. And the second thing is ask for alternatives. Now, sometimes the response doesn't resonate, right? So ChatGPT might give you a response, which it might not be what you're looking for. So you have to ask for alternatives, right? And third is leveraging the context, right? So you have to use references to earlier prompts or responses to maintain continuity in the conversation, right? Uh, and, and usually if you start uh, prompting ChatGPT within the same window, it has this ability to remember the conversation so you can probably tell it like hey you know what at the beginning of this conversation we had discussed this on that context i'm looking for the answer so keeping these things is really important especially when you are into iterative prompts so today we learned about how to iterate and refine the responses from chat gpt and this is really useful for it professionals who are working in complex workflows or complex tasks and if you remember the prompt engine engineering videos will be one per month so uh, we will be releasing the next step of prompt engineering video next month and in that video we will look at role based prompts for example you can ask ChatGPT to act as a system administrator and give a response so that the answers are more customized or tailor-made to a particular role
So that's it for this week. And in case if you're somebody who has stumbled on this video for the very first time, then check out our entire playlist of generative AI for IT professionals and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, comment and share it with your friends. Thank you.